The drama begins by showing a child named Koen. She thought that it was the arrival of his father, and Mei immediately checked. However, she found her mother who was lying instead. After a terrible incident, Enme was taken by her stepmother to be entrusted to a church located in Barcelona. Day after day, Enme has grown into an adult. In prison-like life, Enme tries to escape. In her escape attempt, Enme accidentally meets Kim Ji-ha, a former mercenary. Knowing Ji-ha is also Korean, Enme tries to ask for help. However, Ji-ha himself is on the run. He ignored Enme's request and tried not to make a fuss. Enme runs again to avoid the bodyguards hired by her stepmother, but when Enme is caught, suddenly Ji-ha is there. As a former military special, Ji-ha manages to defeat the bodyguard. However, unfortunately, the bodyguard was a policeman. When Ji-ha sees Enna who has been caught, Ji-ha prefers to continue his journey to the airport. Six months later, Ji-ha has returned to Korea and works as an advertising agency. That night, Ji-ha gets a job repairing banners at a company. Ji-ha was stopped from entering because he didn't have a business card. One of the women tried to give an excuse so that Ji-ha could put up the banner that night. In the middle of his work, he accidentally saw a couple of men and women making out. He is Sejun, a presidential candidate and father of a Na, while the woman is his mistress. Embarrassed by his immoral behavior, Sejun asks him to close the curtain. On the other side, a group of people came to attack the office. From outside the building, Jiha sees the person who helped him get beat up as well. Immediately, Jiha tried to enter and then put up a fight. After the alarm went off, the police arrived. Finally, the attackers decided to withdraw. Elsewhere, a TV show is covering Choi Yu Jin, the owner of JSS Security, and Sejun's wife and Anna's stepmother. Yu Jin is the perfect wife in the eyes of the public. After that, Yu Jin gets news of the attack on her office. Not long after, Sejun asked his wife to clean up the mess, including Jiha, who had seen his immoral actions. Finally, JSS troops were sent to attack Jiha's residence. On the other hand, Jo Chul, who is a former lieutenant and head of the JSS bodyguard, realizes that this man is Kim Jiha, the best squad he has ever trained in the special team. Mr. Chul immediately asks Director Cook to withdraw all his troops, otherwise his troops may die. At his residence, Jiha notices the arrival of the JSS troops. Jiha takes down the JSS team one by one. After that, Jiha decided to leave his residence without leaving a trace. Meanwhile, Mr. Chul, who arrived at the scene, was very grateful that none of his troops died. Elsewhere, Anna again tries to escape. Anna keeps running until she almost gets hit by a car. Seeing the flashing car headlights makes Anna remember the incident when her mother died and she feels that she had killed her mother. Anna remembers when she gave sleeping pills to her mother, which eventually made her mother die. Meanwhile, the car owner was fascinated to see Anna's beauty and had time to take her picture. Soon, an old lady tries to get Anna over to the side. Failure to catch Jiha makes Yu Jin angry. Director Cook, as the person in charge of the search for Jiha, asks to be given the opportunity to look for him again. Mr. Chul, who knows Jiha very well, thinks that JSS won't be able to catch him. Formerly, Jiha was the best special forces in Blackstone, even Jiha was the best mercenary in Iraq. However, because of his actions, he had to be expelled and became a fugitive. The situation is getting worse because Anna's photo has been spread on social media. In addition, the one who took the photo was Paula Felt, a famous designer in Spain who made netizens start to identify Anna. Eugene is very afraid of Anna's identity will be revealed in public. Secretary Kim suggests killing Anna, but it will be bad for Eugene. During this time, Anna was used to control her husband. If there is no Anna, Eugene can no longer control Sejun. Finally, Eugene ordered to bring Anna back to Korea with the aim of making it easier to monitor. Somewhere else, Sejun asks Mr. Chul to take care of Anna. For years, Sejun had to obey Yujin's orders for Enna's safety. If Enna dies, then all of Yujin's achievements so far will collapse. Elsewhere, Jiha meets an old man with a pickup truck that breaks down. Jiha tries to repair Grandpa's vehicle. After that, Grandpa allowed Jiha to stay at his house, but he had to leave tomorrow. Director Cook's efforts to find Jiha never subside. By asking the police department leaders for help, seeing that the grandfather was moved and finally joined in cutting the grass. Long story short, the lawnmower breaks, Jiha will go to buy it. On the other side, JSS managed to find Jiha's whereabouts. Someone has been sent to take care of Jiha. When Jiha came back, the grandma and the grandpa were about to be burned. Luckily, Jiha managed to stop him. In the fight, he managed to paralyze the JSS man. By interrogating him, Jiha manages to get information about the person who bothered his life. Jiha quickly monitors Yu Jin's house, which is full of bodyguards. That night, Anna has arrived in Korea. Soon, Jiha started his action by disguising as a courier. After successfully barging in, Jiha went straight to Eugene. Jiha asks not to disturb his life and those around him. Otherwise, Jiha will continue to meet Eugene, and the second meeting is Eugene's death. But suddenly, all of Eugene's bodyguards came. Previously, Eugene had received information about Jiha, so it was very easy for Eugene to frame him. Finally, Jiha must be arrested. Not long after, the police came to look for a motorcycle theft case. 
and that motorbike is the one that Jiha uses. The presence of the police gives Jiha time to remove the handcuffs on his hands. Immediately, Jiha beat up all the guards and took a gun from one of the guards. Jiha re-enters to meet Yujin, and this is the second meeting which means Yujin's death. However, suddenly, Ana was there in order to shoot Yujin immediately. Immediately, Jiha remembered his meeting with Ana in Spain. Now he realized he wasn't the only one who wanted Yujin dead. By holding Yujin hostage, Jiha asked the bodyguards to come out and prepare a car for him. Jiha has also recorded all his conversations with Yujin. Via email, the evidence will be given to the prosecutor, judge, and also the Blue House. If Jiha dies, an email will automatically be sent. To prevent that from happening, Yujin must keep Jiha from dying. In this situation, Jiha told Yujin to drive a car to escape. However, Yujin's bodyguards continue to follow her. Soon, a motorcyclist approached them. Then he hacks the car so that it can be controlled by remote control. The speed of the car continues to increase, which makes Jiha have to take over the wheel. To escape from the remote control, it must maintain a distance of 20 meters from the motorcyclist. When Jiha tries to shoot, Yujin's bodyguard realizes that the motorcyclist was trying to cause an accident by increasing the speed of the car. Because they couldn't stop, they had to hit the road divider until the car rolled. Meanwhile, the motorcyclist is hit by Yujin's bodyguard. However, things got worse when they got out of the car. Luckily, Jiha made it out with Yujin. Jiha doesn't want him to die. Yujin immediately took him to the hospital. The incident was also considered an act of political war by Park Guansu, one of the people who was also running for president. Jiha wakes up in the hospital with his hands and feet tied. Soon Mr. Chol was there, Mr. Chol realizes that the rope ties will not be able to hold Jiha. He untied all those ties. Meanwhile, Yujin has also been treated in a different room accompanied by her husband and secretary. Not long after that, Choi Sung Won came to pay a visit. Choi Sung is Yujin's half brother. He is the CEO of JB Company. Meanwhile, outside, the reporters had arrived at the hospital. Sejun expresses his feelings by telling a sad story to attract the sympathy of others, and pretending to stop being a presidential candidate in order to fight for justice, for the oppressed people which ultimately makes Sejun even more supported by his popularity in the eyes of the public. On the other side, Wan Su as Sejun's opponent also makes a visit to the hospital to see Yu Jin, which of course is done for the sake of his image. Meanwhile, Ji Ha has got a new idea considering that his real identity is already on Interpol's wanted list. Mr. Chol makes an offer if he wants to join JSS. However, after being betrayed by his leader, Jiha is no longer interested in devotion. Jiha just wants a peaceful life. No one will get hurt if nobody doesn't bother him. While in the elevator, Jiha accidentally met Wansu who had finished visiting Yujin. Seeing Wansu makes Jiha commemorate the death of the person he loves. He wanted so badly to vent his anger, but he couldn't. After his condition improves, Jiha makes a mine that will be used for Wansu at a barbershop where Wansu is also shaving his beard. He stuffed the trigger in Wan Su's suit. The device will react with the mines he puts. However, when Wan Su was about to pass the mine, suddenly a child cried under the mine which made Guan Su choose another door. Meanwhile, Ji Ha had to flee immediately when one of the officers asked his identity. Too many officers make Ji Ha have to get into a fistfight. Luckily, Ji Ha managed to escape with Yu Jin and Mr. Chul's ride. Yu Jin has received news that Ji Ha is traumatized and can't pull the trigger of his gun to kill. Yu Jin realizes that Ji Ha is planning to kill Wan Su. However, his failure caused him to have been exposed. Automatically, Wan Su will increase his security so Ji Ha won't be able to kill Wan Su alone. Because their goals are the same, then Yu Jin will help Ji Ha and JSS will be his weapon. The scene changes after exercising. Ji Ha comes to JSS headquarters to get further treatment. The doctor who provided friendly service irritated Master Song. Master Song himself is a trainer at JSS. Out of frustration, Master Song told him to come to the practice site as a new member. Master Song's initial goal was to embarrass Ji Ha. But instead, he had to embarrass himself. Ji Ha's probationary period is over. It's assigned to go to a VIP place with Leader Siu, who is the leader of the JSS team. Long story short, Leader Siu objected to Mr. Chul's decision, remembering that Ji had just joined and went straight to the VIP area. Finally, at the bathhouse, Ji Ha is tested against all the guards who are there. But as ex special forces, it's not that difficult. In the end, he has officially become a VIP team with the call of K2. Ji Ha will be assigned to a place that doesn't require teamwork. Jiha will be assigned to take care of Siju's daughter Enna. Enna's whereabouts are kept secret, only people with exceptions know about Enna. Enna will remain secret from the public until the end of the election period. Previously, Enna was always guarded by Jiang Mei Eka. J4. Jiang Mai is Enna's personal guard from Spain to Korea. On the other side, Enna had been peeking at their conversation. Enna recalled her meeting with Jiha in Spain and at Yujin's house. In the exile house, there is also a housemaid who cleans the place as well as prepares food. Jiha's job is to keep an eye on Enna via CCTV. 
Ji Hao will be on duty at night, while Kang Sung Gyun, who has been working for a long time, will be on duty during the day. Long story short, Sung Gyun is annoyed with Ji Ha's informal attitude. Sung Gyun feels that he is a senior there. However, Ji Ha finds out Sung Gyun is also a former Special Forces officer. However, because Ji Ha is in a higher division, Sung Gyun loses even he is asked to make coffee. In between his casual work, Jang Mei tries to tease Ji Ha by showing her curves. However, it wasn't Ji Ha who was happy. But the Sung Gyun loves seeing that. At a party, Se Jun and Yu Jin come with warm greetings as if they are a very harmonious couple. At the party, Se Jun as a playboy returns to his action with young girls. Yu Jin realizes that the car accident that happened to him was the work of Guan Su, even the girl who was sent by Guan Su who was assigned to have an affair with Se Jun as Yu Jin's employee. The girl provides evidence that the previous accident was the act of Guan Su. Elsewhere, Ji Ha has started his duty. Not long after, Ane left the room to cook instant noodles. However, unfortunately, Anna doesn't know how to turn on the stove. Ji Ha, who saw that, tried to give directions by talking by himself. Because the stove doesn't work, Anna gives up by bringing some breads. Anna gets back to her room, which finally upsets Ji Ha. Somewhere else, the party was over. Yu Jin tells Seijun to meet the young woman whom he has made an appointment with. However, before leaving, they have to pretend to be romantic in public. Behind her firmness and cruelty, Yu Jin is a wounded woman. Meanwhile, Ji Ha tries to get rid of his boredom by smoking outside. However, suddenly he saw the shadow of someone on the roof of the house. At that time, Ji Ha tried to contact Mai Ran, but because Mai Ran does not answer, Ji Ha rushed to check the shadow. Turns out it was Enna who ate uncooked noodles with a cat. There, Enna is reminded of her mother's death again. Enna keeps blaming herself for her mother's death. In the morning, Mai Ran regrets not being able to answer Ji Ha's call. She rushed to Ji Ha with food. However, Ji Ha is a way to finish his business and Sung Gyun finally enjoys the food alone. A funeral will be held. However, all of Yujin's bodyguards are not allowed to enter the temple. Yujin and Seijun are only allowed to enter with two bodyguards. Finally, Mr. Chul sends Ji Ha and leader Siu to escort them inside. This is the funeral of Yujin's aunt who owns shares in GB's company. Before the secret meeting was held, Ji Ha gave a pen to Yujin. If something happens, press the pen once and in case of danger, press the pen twice. The meeting took place in a room with very tight security. The meeting was held for the reading of the deceased's will. Yujin's close relationship with her aunt made the deceased donate all of her wealth to Yujin's foundation. The contents of the will that did not match expectations made the situation heated up. Finally, Yu Yujin decided to press the pen once, which resulted in the conversation in the room being heard by Ji Ha and leader Seo. The uncle asked Yujin to sell all the shares of JB Group as well as her foundation, and he will buy them at triple the price. Of course, all of the shares will be given to his son in law, namely someone. With the lure of that much money, it will be easy to make Sejun president. Instantly, Yu Jin gets angry, accidentally made her pen thrown over and got caught by someone. Then he turned off the tap. Yu Jin feels that she has fallen into the trap to initially claim the shares, but she is forced to sell her own foundation instead. Ji Ha felt something was strange by carrying an umbrella. Ji Ha decided to go in and fight all the guards. Ji Ha makes the fire alarm go off, which causes everyone to panic and rush out. With the umbrella he brought, Ji Ha told Yu Jin to get out. At that time, Yujin realized that Ji Ha was not a hunting dog, but a wolf who didn't need orders. After that incident, Yujin decides to return to JS headquarters. The news about Ji Ha beating up all the guards heard her by the doctor's ears, and she told Mai Ran. The doctor's flattery of Ji Ha makes Master Song inviting Ji Ha to eat to make a scene as if Master Song beats him in front of the doctor. However, Master Song was beaten instead. Master Song's head was leaking blood and had to be bandaged. The scene shifts, Ji Ha is back on guard at night. Previously, Ji Ha had prepared the ingredients needed for Anna to cook noodles. In the midst of the joy of cooking noodles, Anna realizes that this is Ji Ha's doing. Finally, Anna closes the CCTV so that she is not monitored. Ji Ha, who had panicked, fortunately was still able to see Anna from another CCTV. Anna happily enjoyed the noodles that night, making Ji Ha begin to grow in love for Anna. Feeling bored, Ji Ha tries to get some fresh air. However, he met with Mai Ran instead. Mai Ran, who has feelings for Ji Ha continues to tease him and thinks that Knight's call is something special. Long story short, Mai Ran had time to tell her complaints when she took care of Anna in Spain. Anna continues to run away looking for her father. However, her father never cared about Anna. Not long after that, Ji Ha got a call to go to the JSS office on the ninth floor. When Ji Ha was about to go to the ninth floor, he was required to show his card. However, instead of taking the elevator, he went down. Ji Ha has arrived at a place called Cloud 9, a room that not anyone can enter. Plus, the room has the intelligence to access information around the world. All JSS secrets and information are stored there. The room equipped with AI intelligence that could only obey Yu Jin's orders alone. Long story short, Yu Jin wants to know why Ji had tried to kill Guan Su. While still in Iraq, Ji Ha met a woman named Rania. 
Ji-ha intends to ask her to marry and will stay in Korea for a peaceful life. However, one day, Rainia became a translator in a secret business. Won Su did not want the information leaked, and Shu was eventually killed. Ji-ha, who saw that, was suddenly beaten unconscious. When he came back to his senses, a gun was in his hand. Ji-ha is accused of being Rainia's killer and becomes a fugitive. Elsewhere, Enna has heard about Ji-ha being summoned to the JSS office. Enna realizes that no one will guard the CCTV. By taking Myran's belongings, Enna tries to escape by disguising as Myran. Enna came to the place where she lived when she was little with her mother. Those memories lead Enna to a photo studio that once captured moments with her mother and aunt. Finally, Enna decides to come to a hospital to meet the aunt in the photo, with the aim of finding the truth behind her mother's death. On the other hand, Jiha is back and realizes Enna has run away. Fortunately, Enna uses Myran's card to take a taxi, which finally makes them know where Enna is now. The guards who use microphones to communicate make Enna aware of their existence with the microphone she stole from Myran. Unable to find Enna, the guards are assigned to keep Enna from coming to the Catholic Church, because Sejun and Yujin are currently there. In the middle of the event, suddenly, Enna was there with the nuns. Sejun and Yujin notice Enna's existence. Don't want the event to be messed up, the guards can't just catch Enna. At that time, Enna's very sincere appearance broke and shed tears. Enna disappeared again and left a letter from her father. Enna feels that she has lost her way and hopes that her father will come to pick her up at a place that only her father knows. At a playground, Enna recalls fond memories with her father and mother. At that time, Sejun told Enna to keep waiting if she was lost. Then Sejun as a father will come to pick up Enna. At that time, Enna continued to wait for her father. Two women were seen taking pictures in front of Enna, which resulted in GSS finding Enna's whereabouts. With his shadow, the father came with ice cream. However, it's not Sejun but Jiha. Jiha admits that he came to represent his busy father. Jiha tells Enna to eat ice cream. Since it was a gift from her father, Enna would eat it. Previously, Jiha asked leader Seo not to approach until Jiha brought Enna. Enna recounts fond memories of the first time she went to the playground with her father. However, suddenly, Enna suffocated and finally passed out. It turns out that Enna has an allergy to strawberries. If she eats even a little, it can threaten her life. Help is coming soon, and Enna is currently having difficulty breathing which requires Jiha to give artificial respiration. The situation got worse when it was not allowed to call an ambulance from the nearest hospital. Finally, Jiha quickly brought Enna to JSS hospital. The viral gossip about Enna that Paula Fate was looking for turned out to be worldwide. Even the two young girls knew this. Then in the end, Enna's photo was reposted on social media. Jiha is very worried about Enna's condition. And when Enna has woken up, he remembers Jiha who gave him artificial respiration. Outside, Jiha chats with Master Song about Enna. Previously, Enna's mother Yu Heron had a relationship with Sejun. Once upon a time, Heron married Go Ah Won and then went to America. However, suddenly Heron reappears in Sejun's life who is already living happily with Yu Jin by bringing Enna who is Sejun's son. After that, Enna's mother died allegedly committing suicide. A meeting is held between Yu Jin and one of the party members. Yu Jin already has a weakness that could threaten the party. And Yu Jin also gave the weakness to negotiate in order to join the party. The news reached Buan Su's ears. Feeling nervous, Wan Su intends to dismantle the corrupt people who cooperate with Yu Jin, so that he is considered a hero. The bad things that happened to Enna were also heard by her stepmother. Finally, Yu Jin decided to meet Enna. Yu Jin tries to tell Enna that her father no longer wants Enna. Enna's existence will only hamper Sejun's future to become president, even assuming his mother's death is because of Enna. In the middle of the conversation, suddenly Ji Ha is there and asks not to disturb Enna, who is sick. Ji Ha asks Enna not to cry and will bring her father to meet her. That night, Sejun is appearing at an event. Jiha has arrived there, and he sees some suspicious people. There were also riots. However, Sejun's gentle and patient response made Sejun's name more and more popular. After the event, Sejun is about to take a shower, and asks the makeup girl to come in the bath with him. Before entering, the girl asked one of the guards for medicine. However, the action was known to Jiha. After taking care of it, Jiha told Sejun to put on his clothes. Now that the police have arrived, Jiha takes Sejun away with him to avoid the trap that was set for him. Fortunately, the police were intercepted by Mr. Chul and his troops until Sejun was completely safe. Currently, Jiha brings Sejun to meet with Enna. Sejun didn't want to, but after Jiha told Enna that she was always worried about her father, even willing to eat something that threatened her life so she wouldn't be a burden to her father. This makes Sejun want to meet Enna. So far, Sejun has not met Enna for Enna's safety. Sejun had sold his soul to Yujin for the sake of his greed. Sejun's current goal is to become president. Then with that power, he can escape from Yujin and save Enna. Sejun must be careful in talking to Enna. If he speaks wrongly, Enna can be killed by Yujin. Before meeting Enna, Sejun asks Jiha to always take care of Enna until the end. And sure enough, 
Sejun's meeting with Inai has been monitored by Yujin. Just then, Inai remembers the day her mother died, and the fact that her mother didn't kill herself but was killed by someone. But Sejun must reject Inai's story, and is forced to hurt Inai's feelings for the safety of his daughter. Now Inai realizes that Yujin's words are true, that she's only her father's past. This afternoon, Inai has been allowed to go home. Inai had time to ask why did Jiha bring his father to come? Jiha did that of course because he cared. However, Enna doesn't want Jiha to protect her by acting like her father. Finally, a fight broke out. Jiha then leaves and feels it was a waste to have made a promise with Sejun. The chaos that occurred earlier made Yujin furious. The prostitute managed to get away with a counterclaim for Sejun's harassment. Yujin himself will take care of his case. Meanwhile, the treacherous guards will be exterminated so that no one else will follow in her footsteps. In his previous appearance, Sejun asked the prosecutor to conduct a financial sector investigation which caused dismay for all officials and enemies including Yu Jin's uncle. Investigations are also carried out at Yu Jin's house, but of course with exceptions. The investigation also had an impact on Guansu. Several important people in his party had to be dragged into the investigation. In addition, Sejun, who always escapes his traps, makes Guansu surprised and realizes that there is a great person on Sejun's side, namely Ji Ha. Meanwhile, and as viral news has spread among Korean netizens, her photos are also back on the internet. And Nat is currently on her way home. As promised, Ji Ha will continue to protect Nat from anyone, including Yu Jin. However, one netizen accidentally saw Nat in the car. Instantly, the netizens followed Nat into her house and had time to take pictures of Nat. Seeing that, Ji Ha immediately approached the netizens. Ji Ha has planned something by having the netizens gather everyone, and they will be allowed to take pictures with Nat. Master Song was also asked to spread information about Nat. The news reached Yu Jin that fans and reporters had arrived at the house. Immediately, Yu Jin sends troops to execute En Nai if revealing her father in public. With the help of the housemaid and Mai Ran, Ji Ha will protect En Nai. Ji Ha also gets word from Mr. Chul that the assassination team has been dispatched, and that the safety is in Ji Ha's hands. Before En Nai leaves, the housemaid asks not to take pictures using the flash. Meanwhile, the JSS team has prepared in their positions. Luckily, Ji Ha immediately incapacitated all the shooters. After everything is safe, Ji Ha gives the code so that Ennana can get out safely. However, unfortunately, Ji Ha had to meet the leader of the troops. Finally, a fight was inevitable. On the other side, Enna has met her fans. Eugene had also arrived there. However, when asked about her father, Enna admitted that her father was a film director named Ku Junho. Hearing that Eugene was very relieved but somewhat surprised. But suddenly, the reporters shoot Enna with a flash. Instantly, Enna felt dizzy. Yu Jin immediately approached Enna and asked her to stop taking pictures of her daughter. In front of Yu Jin, Ji Ha confessed this was all his plan. It's better like this than Enna being shot dead in public which will be bad for Yu Jin. Hearing that, Yu Jin felt that Ji Ha had done a good job. Now Yu Jin must be more careful because Enna already has a sword that protects her. In the evening, Enna again contemplates above the house. On the other side, Ji Ha is also there to keep an eye on Enna. Ji Ha again remembered the beautiful scene when he was with Enna, which made Ji Ha begin to fall in love with Enna. Feeling bored, Enna is about to enter the house, but she almost falls. Immediately, Ji Ha tried to catch Enna, but instead fell by himself. Finally, Enna asks Ji Ha to accompany her that night. Enna is grateful for everything that Ji Ha has given her. So far, Enna is still alive because she's harmless Yu Jin, and now Enna has become Yu Jin's biggest weakness. If Anna claims to be Sejun's son, then Yu Jin's achievements will be destroyed and Sejun's career will also be destroyed. Now Anna realizes that her mother was killed to control her father, even on the night of her mother's death, she continues to drink while waiting for her father. Not wanting her mother to continue drinking, Anna gave her mother sleeping pills, after that her mother died. Anna continues to cry feeling that her mother's death is because of her. By giving a hug, Ji Ha tried to calm Anna. Somewhere, the police chief has come to see Wansu. The chief of police is a two-faced person. He briefly joined the Sejun's team as well as the Guan Su's team. The police chief gave the background of Jiha who used to be a Blackstone squad. Guan Su felt that this was a very coincidental thing. Today, Anna looks happy when she remembers Jiha's concern. Anna begins to communicate with her housemaid and Mai Ran. Anna invites them to have breakfast together from today onwards. Currently, Anna's whereabouts are kept secret, so all workers who know about Anna can't just leave. If anything happened to Anna, then they would die. A meeting is held by Jiha with Yu Jin. Yu Jin reminds Ji Ha not to play around and kills Wan Su immediately. However, he didn't want to just kill Wan Su. Ji Ha doesn't want anyone to be a victim. Ji Ha also thinks Yu Jin is no different from Wan Su, who is willing to get rid of other people for her sake. Hearing that Yu Jin didn't want to continue the debate and just wanted to continue the way of killing Wan Su, Yu Jin intends to remove Wan Su from the presidential candidate. If Ji Ha directly kills Wan Su, then there is no remorse for his past murder. The first step is to destroy Wan Su's dream. 
Once we have destroyed his dreams and hopes, Wan Su's death will be felt very painfully. Lately, Anna has been having trouble sleeping. Accompanied by Mai Ran, Anna comes to JSS headquarters to meet the doctor. However, when she meets Master Song, Anna is invited to practice martial arts. Suddenly, someone came to hug Anna by claiming to be Anna's uncle. Anna's arrival makes Eugene very surprised. Someone plans to take Anna out for a walk. Someone had threatened to reveal Anna's identity if not allowed. Long story short, someone takes Anna to the hospital to consult a psychologist regarding the trauma of his mother's death. While waiting, someone invites her to talk one-on-one. -on -one. However, when Jiha returns, he doesn't find Anna. The news also reached Eugene. Instantly, JSS troops were sent to look for Anna. However, at that time, the collaboration between JSS and JB Group was terminated. It instantly made Eugene even angrier by waving the war flag. In the end, someone will send Anna's location. However, Jiha must come alone, otherwise Anna is in danger. As soon as possible, Jiha goes to the address given. At that time, Mai Ran, Sung Gyun, and the housemaid were there. Someone's actions almost made Eugene kill his wife. In the end, Eugene pulled back all of her bodyguards. Currently, Anna believes that someone is a good uncle figure. Meanwhile, Sung Gyun has expressed his feelings for Mai Ran. Been wanting a date for a long time, Mai Ran immediately kisses Sung Gyun. Now they are officially a couple. Those who are chasing each other makes Anna also want to be chased by Jiha. In the evening, the party was held. Everyone looks happy except Jiha. Jiha suspects someone by asking the plan behind all of this. Someone just wants Anna to live by his side, and then be used as a shield to keep JB Group from falling into Eugene's hands. That night, he also meets Anna who is drunk. Jiha escorted Anna back to her room. Jiha gives Anna a walkie-talkie to be in the lookout. However, they are used to communicate with each other like lovers instead. Now, Anna realizes that she has fallen in love with Jiha. Anna starts paying attention to Jiha by giving him a blanket. At that time, Jiha was having a bad dream. Jiha woke up and immediately hugged Anna. After that incident, Jiha was confused what to do. But it was not like that for Anna. Anna is feeling happy. Days go by, Mai Ran put makeup on Anna to meet Jiha. However, Jiha had left without Anna's knowledge. Jiha intends to meet Eugene so he won't lock Anna anymore. Not long after, Anna sent her photo to Jiha and called him. From now on, Anna claims Jiha is hers. After that, Samwa meets Anna by showing her mother's death report from the police search results. On the other side, this was Eugene's last interview on the TV screen. Several questions arise about Anna and Eugene's relationship. Eugene claimed to have become friends with Anna's mother after meeting in the JB group. Eugene feels that the meeting and separation of Anna's parents is because of her. Therefore, after the death of Anna's mother, Eugene decided to take care of Anna like her own child. Yujin also replies that Anna has a trauma that causes social phobia and can't leave the house. Suddenly, Anna has been invited on the TV show. Yujin has to endure embarrassment when Anna answers all the questions that don't match the answers. There, Anna confesses that she wants to investigate her mother's death through a book that Sun gave her. Anna is increasingly convinced that her mother died not by suicide. She also made her appearance in public for the sake of tearing Yujin's mask. Jika realized that someone used Anna as a sword to attack Yujin which of course was very dangerous for Anna. To deal with Anna's trauma to the flash, someone administers anti-anxiety medication. Jiha, who saw that, suggested that she should be careful that she should take the medicine directly at the hospital. However, Anna ignores Jiha's words by considering someone a good person. On the other side, some people do an attack. Jiha had a chance to see them and find out what they were doing. Poison gas is spread to kill Anna. Jiha immediately told Anna to escape through the air vent. This attack was carried out on the orders of Secretary Kim. Since Jiha's arrival, plans fall apart. Inside the poisonous smoke, Jiha tries to put up a fight. However, the number of opponents was too much, and it overwhelmed Jiha. Instantly, Anna appears trying to help Jiha. In the midst of the toxic smoke, Anna puts on a mask for Jiha, which finally makes Anna faint. So far, Sejun has been detained to carry out an investigation. The schedule that Sejun was supposed to be free today had to be postponed, making Guansu very happy. After all the chaos, Jiha decides to take Enna back to the secret house. That way, Secretary Kim wouldn't be able to attack him. Somewhere else, Eugene is furious that Sejun's plan released today was postponed. In order to free Sejun, a bribe must be done, or even a threat to the judge. Behind it, Wansu is controlled the president by threatening to keep Sejun in detain. That way, Sejun has to go to a trial. Then in the end, he died in the presidential election. Meanwhile, Eugene's party tries to find a way out by killing Wansu tonight. Now, Enna has arrived at the secret house. Anna is very afraid to return to the house. With a blanket, Jiha invites Anna to slowly walk in. But because Anna is still scared, Jiha tries to calm her down by giving her a kiss. Wansu's assassination plan is still ongoing. Right now, Wansu had very tight security. 
Killing Guan Su wasn't easy, even if sending Ji Ha, there would be very little chance that Ji Ha could return safely. However, Ji Ha will be willing to kill Guan Su. As the return, Ji Ha asked for Chief Secretary Kim to no longer bother Anna. Ji Ha will make sure Anna won't get in the way of Yu Jin's ambitions. Anna tries to call Ji Ha. He asks Ji Ha to return safely. And this is an order. At that time, Leader Seo also received an additional task from Secretary Kim to kill Ji Ha, even if he failed to kill. Wansu, Ji Han, must still be killed. JS troops begin their march towards Wansu's house. Realizing the impending attack, Wansu intends to end it all tonight. Wansu tricked the JSS troops as if he was coming home. However, in a different car, Wansu goes to the hideout. It turned out that Yu Jin had predicted the incident, so the shooter group had been prepared there. Meanwhile, Ji Ha and Leader Siu got caught when in disguise when they answered the coded questions incorrectly. From distance, the troops fire at Wansu's bodyguard, so Leader Siu and Ji Ha managed to escape. As the gunfight broke out, Wan Su rushed in for cover. Immediately, Leader Siu and Ji Ha tried to break through to chase after Wan Su. However, unfortunately, Leader Siu had to be shot. With his skills, Ji Ha managed to follow into Wan Su's hideout. Ji Ha tries to kill Wan Su, fortunately, he can't pull the trigger to kill him. Ji Ha tries to kill Wan Su in another way by pretending to accept Wan Su's offer. However, Ji Ha had to ask Yujin's approval first. Without many words, Yujin wanted to speak directly to Wan Su. Guan Su makes an offer to free Seijun and include him in the party, but according to Yujin, it's not worth it. Yujin asks Guan Su to step down from the presidential candidate. Unfortunately, Guan Su couldn't do that, he would rather die than resign from the election. Finally, Yujin told Ji Ha to return safely. As a result of this incident, Seijun is released and officially announced as a party member. While Ji Ha had received the requested money because Ji Ha was the closest person to Yujin, Guan Su invited Ji Ha to work with him. Guan Su will pay Ji Ha as a mercenary. Because Ji Ha didn't kill Guan Su, Secretary Kim didn't lose his head. Yu Jin tells Secretary Kim not to touch Ji Ha. If that happens, Yu Jin himself will kill Secretary Kim. Ji Ha's return has been waited by Anna. Anna hugs Ji Ha very happily. On the other side, Sejun comes by slapping Yu Jin. Previously, Sejun had been provoked by someone about Yu Jin who wanted to kill Anna. Sejun again warns that if he touches Anna, the agreement will be void and he will not become president. However, Yu Jin tells Sejun to withdraw from the election if he doesn't like it. She could have struck a deal with Guan Su by asking to be given GB's company. Yu Jin regrets ever loving Seijun as a playboy. In the past, Seijun tried to get Yu Jin only for political purposes. Because of Yu Jin, Seijun can now become an official. However, at this time, Yu Jin no longer has feelings for Seijun. If only that hand was no longer needed, Yu Jin would cut it off. Somewhere else, the JSS team is partying with Ji Ha and Anna. From outside, Yu Jin just looked at them. She asked to take Ji Ha to Cloud 9 tomorrow. After the party, Leader Siu comes closer to Ji Ha. Because everyone was drunk, the JS troops couldn't drive and had to spend the night there. Meanwhile, Ji Ha had been alone with Anna on the rooftop that night. Ji Ha plans to take Anna to Spain after this war. Anna had time to ask about Ji Ha's business while in Spain at that time. Ji Ha claims to have been framed for killing the person he loves and being chased. Ji Ha now has someone to protect so he feels happy. As a result of Guan Su's attack, Ji Ha is considered a JSS hero. In Cloud 9, Ji Ha meets Yu Jin again. It turns out that Yu Jin asked Ji Ha to work with Guan Su. Yu Jin will soon set a trap, so Guan Su will try to get close to Ji Ha. And the desire to kill him will be even greater. Meanwhile, Enna is currently visited by someone. Someone had recruited the three of them to work directly under his orders to focus on keeping Enna at a higher wage. Enna asked the whereabouts of her mother's grave. On the other side, after having a meeting with Ji Ha, Yu Jin had made a plan with Secretary Kim without Ji Ha knowing. The reception for Seijun is done as a sign of joining the party. Meanwhile, an N.A. has arrived at his mother's grave, which has been abandoned, surrounded by journalists and reporters. And their prays for her mother to rest in peace. At that time, Ji Ha was meeting with Master Song. Ji Ha tries to ask someone's history of being the CEO of GB's company. There used to be a lot of people who approve Yu Jin as the heir to the JB company. However, suddenly Seijun appears and seduces Yu Jin to love him. Yu Jin's act of choosing Seijun angers his father. Meanwhile, someone is willing to be matched with anyone. In the end, GB's company was given to someone. Many thought that Yu Jin was more aggressive than Sun Wan. However, on the contrary, Sun Wan was more aggressive than Yu Jin. Plus, his thinking is unpredictable. Master Song was able to know all that because he was a JSF veteran, who had worked as an exclusive bodyguard at GB's company. Now, Anna is invited by Sun Wan to prison to meet a witness for his mother's murder, with Sun Wan's offer that will reduce his sentence for four years. The criminal wants to tell what happened at that time. That night, he wanted to rob Heron's house. Then suddenly, someone came and killed Heron. The criminal who confessed the killing was Choi Yujin. Someone asked the criminal to be a witness in court. 
Sung Won again instigates Anna to follow this plan by diverting the public's attention, so that his father seems to be a victim, and not be dragged into this problem in court later. That way, Anna's father can still run for president. Sung Won also asked not to tell Ji Ha, by assuming that Ji Ha is the one who sided with Yu Jin. In the evening, Anna will appear as a model in memory of her mother. However, due to nervousness, Anna continues to take medicine from Sung Won over and over again, which makes Ji Ha start to worry. However, Enna feels that she has to appear perfect in public, which makes Ji Ha unable to do anything. When Enna appears, suddenly a light shine on her face. Instantly, Ji Ha ran to catch Enna. The next day, Secretary Kim informs Yu Jin of an article that says that Enna is Yu Jin's daughter who had an affair with director Cook Jun Ho. Then, Heron as Jun Ho's wife decides to return to Korea to threaten Yu Jin for money. Unable to stand it, Yu Jin finally kills Heron. Meanwhile, Yu Jin's marriage to Se Jun is just a play. Anna tries to inquire about the false article, even making her mother a terrible person. Someone does that so that Eugene can be investigated for murder. After that, Anna's mother's good name will be cleared before the public. Together with his uncle, Anna asks the police to conduct a reinvestigation. Meanwhile, Eugene is currently volunteering to feed the elderly. However, suddenly a bunch of reporters came with a lot of questions. It made Eugene dizzy and fainted. Seeing that a family war had started, Wan Su was overjoyed. He felt Eugene would self-destruct. Master Song tries to visit Yu Jin with the juice she usually drinks when she is sick. Yu Jin asks Master Song to speak casually by calling him uncle. But Master Song asks Yu Jin to release Anna. If his late father is still alive, he will not agree with Yu Jin's actions. Master Song's words instantly angered Yu Jin and told Master Song to get out. Elsewhere, Se Jun has a meeting with someone and his uncle. All the mess is made to raise Se Jun's name. The uncle asks Se Jun to leave Yu Jin. Elsewhere, and now tries to ask, is Jiha siding with her or Yu Jin? Considering Mai Ran and the others are already working for someone. However, Jiha is still working at JSS. Jiha admits to siding with Anna, but there is work to be done with Yu Jin. Jiha can't tell Anna because it's about murder. As scene changes, Jiha comes to Yu Jin by asking, was Yu Jin the one who killed Anna's mother? Yu Jin will tell the truth about this matter only to Jiha. That Yu Jin didn't kill Anna's mother and didn't tell anyone to do it. Yu Jin knows all the culprits, but she can't say that. All this time, Yu Jin had let Anna and Sejun think of herself as Heron's killer, so that Sejun believes she could kill Anna. That way, Sejun will never leave her. If Jiha wants to know more, Yu Jin asks directly to the mirror. Mirror is an AI in Cloud Nine's room. Yu Jin had made the mirror able to obey Jiha's voice. Now only Yu Jin and Jiha can access Cloud Nine. Before long, someone was there. At that time, Jia had to leave immediately. Meanwhile, someone really wants to own Cloud Nine. He made an offer to hand over Cloud Nine or be the culprit for Heron's murder. Meanwhile, Jiha had entered the Cloud Nine. Jiha starts accessing the mirror with all the questions he needs. On the other side, Sejun and Yu Jin come to the police station for reinvestigation. In front of reporters, Yu Jin tells the truth that Anna is Sejun's biological daughter. Hearing that, someone immediately goes to Sejun to talk about this matter. However, Sejun feels disappointed with someone. Someone has fallen into Yu Jin's trap. The criminal who confessed to seeing the killer of Anna's mother was Yu Jin's hired actor. In front of reporters, Se Jun tells his love story peppered with lies. That he previously had a relationship with Heron. However, Heron went to America and married director Go Junha. When he is heartbroken, Se Jun meets Yu Jin who finally gets married and lives a happy life. Then suddenly Heron came back with Anna as Se Jun's daughter. Heron threatens to make Se Jun betray Yu Jin. However, Se Jun ignores it. Then in the end, Heron committed suicide. At that time, Anna had seen her father's lie on the TV screen, making Anna very disappointed. Meanwhile, the criminal began to change his testimony by claiming to know nothing about the murder of Heron. It turned out that the criminal had gone to jail on the day of Heron's murder. Because there were no witnesses or evidence, Eugene was finally released again. On the other hand, Jiha has observed everything and realizes that this is a trap that Eugene set up to frame Anna and tarnish her mother's good name. As a result of all these incidents, Eugene again gets a good reputation in public. When Eugene returned to the hospital, Someone was already there. Yu Jin tells someone to leave while waiting for his punishment. Yu Jin ordered him not to approach Anna again. Anna will be sent overseas. After that, Yu Jin ordered to take care of Mai Ran and Sung Gyum without a trace. Previously, Ji Ha had installed a bug so that Ji Ha could hear Yu Jin's conversation with someone. On the other side, Anna keeps trying to contact her uncle. However, there was no answer. In the evening, Anna tells Ji Ha everything that she has been deceived. Ji Ha tries to calm Anna down and he informs her that the real fight is just about to begin. Jiha also asks Anna to meet her father. When Sejun arrives, he apologizes for lying. All that was said were lies to protect Anna and her position. Assuming if he become the president, Sejun can protect Anna and make her happy. 
However, in fact, the world of politics even sacrificed Enma and her mother. As a result of this chaos, Jihan returns to Cloud9 with a lot of questions. Secretary Kim accidentally saw it. Elsewhere, Enna returns to visit her mother's grave. With tears in her eyes, Enna apologized to her mother. Not long after, Yujin came with flowers. Yujin never hated Enna. She feels a resemblance to Enna, who lost her mother when she was a teenager. I must live with this stepmother who is someone's biological mother. Yujin asks Enna not to throw another tantrum until her father becomes president. After that, Yujin will bequeath everything she owns to Enna. After that, if Enna wants revenge, Yujin will accept it. However, Enna doesn't need any of that, and she finally tells Yujin to leave. However, Enma wants to unravel the mystery behind her mother's death. Then her life will be filled with sorrow over the deaths of those around her, including Jiha, who is a fugitive from Interpol. It's very easy for Yujin to get rid of him just by making one call. Jiha will be imprisoned for life. The scene switches. Jiha has had a meeting with Seijun. Jiha will help Seijun challenge Guan Su as well as free him from Yujin's claws. However, Seijun must uncover the perpetrators of the murder of Enna's mother. Ji Ha will look for evidence that can hinder many people, including Guan Su, and even the president is also involved in this matter. A deal was made with an agreement that Seijun would be a good father to Enna. At the same time, Yu Jin had returned to Cloud Nine. Secretary Kim tells Yu Jin about Ji Ha and Cloud Nine at that time. Finally, Yu Jin tries to find out what Ji Ha is up to. Ji Ha has untangled the information regarding the Kumar Gate, an oil mine in Iraq, regarding Koreans living near Kumar with no political ties to it. One of them is Kim Suk Han, the president's son. Yu Jin now realizes that Jiha managed to find the key from the Kumar building. Now, Jiha starts to keep an eye on Suk Han, who is a doctor. The scene changes, Jiha returns to meet Wan Su with the excuse of asking for money. However, all the incidents about Enne bring Sejun's name down. Wan Su feels that he doesn't need Jiha anymore, but Jiha has found out about Kumar's gate, which makes Wan Su very surprised. Jiha's meeting with Wan Su is heard by Secretary Kim. Then, in the end, Mr. Chol was told to help Jiha because this was part of the plan. At the hospital, Wan Su tells Suk Han to move the evidence to a safer place. Some people have known the secret and tried to find it. Suk Han continues to be guarded by a very large number of bodyguards. Finally, he makes a plan so Mr. Chul sent people to keep an eye on Suk Han clearly, aiming that Suk Han would feel uncomfortable, and then move the stored memory. That way, he can know the memory location. The surveillance from JSS led by Ji Ha has been heard by Guan Su. Finally, he ordered his guards to steal the memory or destroy it immediately. Suk Han, who was monitored consciously, was made uncomfortable. Suk Han had contacted someone, but there was no answer. At that time, all of them were in an exclusive meeting with the people involved with the Kumar Gate. They are consortium members, some JSS troops saying that the memory had been found. Immediately, Suk Han rushed to retrieve the memory he had stored. At that time, Ji Ha, who was there, had been arrested. Ji Ha tries to fight to get that memory. However, Suk Han had run away. In his car, Suk Han is confronted by Guan Su's bodyguard. Suk Han is forced out to hand it over. At that time, Suk Han ran away. However, unfortunately, Suk Han was cornered again and fell. Luckily, Ji Ha came and saved him. Simultaneously, Ji Ha managed to retrieve the memory. However, while trying to escape, one of the bodyguards managed to shoot Ji Ha. Ji Ha hid the memory under the weeds. After that, he went with Mr. Chul. Ji Ha's condition is currently very critical. The news about his conduct was conveyed to Yu Jin and also Anna. On the other side, news of the JSF attack on the president's son was heard by the chief of police. Eventually, Wan Su took advantage of the situation to attack the JSS headquarters using the police who sided with him. Yu Jin tries to protect Ji Ha from the police by bringing him to Cloud 9. The operation will be carried out inside Cloud 9. Meanwhile, the police have come with an official letter to conduct a search. At that time, the bullet in Ji Ha's body was successfully removed. However, suddenly Ji Ha's condition deteriorated. The doctor keeps trying to get Ji Ha out of the brink of death. Elsewhere, Myran informs Anna that currently Ji Ha is at JSS headquarters. After conducting searches all over the place, the police force director Cook to escort them into Cloud 9. Their whereabouts have been known to Yu Jin. The mirror is automatically ordered to hide important data, leaving only ordinary employee data. Currently, the members of the consortium are also monitoring the heated situation. They couldn't be sure did the memory fall in Yu Jin's hands or not. Until Suk Han wakes up from his faint. At the hospital, Suk Han has regained consciousness. Even though they realized the memory was no longer in his hands, Suk Han told them not to touch Ji Ha with the excuse that Ji Ha had saved him. At this time, the police felt strange. All they found was the data of ordinary employees. Suk Han's orders to retreat also reached them. In the end, the police had to return empty-handed. This situation made Guan Su realize that Yu Jin Sai had managed to get the memory. Yu Jin also realizes that Ji Ha has got the memory, but for now they will pretend as if the memory is in his hands while waiting for Ji Ha to be conscious. On the other side, Mr. Chul is meeting Sejun. 
Seijun tells that Jiha intends to give her the memory in order to defeat Guan Su and escape from Yujin's grip. If the memory falls into Yujin's hands, Seijun will become a puppet president so the world of politics will make no difference. Meanwhile, Anna comes to JSS headquarters to meet Jiha. Master Sol informs her that Jiha is in Cloud 9 even though not everyone can enter. Anna keeps looking for a way to Cloud 9. However, in the end, the JSS bodyguards took Anna away from there. Long story short, Anna asks Yujin to be allowed to see Jiha. So far, Anna calls Yujin by auntie. However, for the sake of meeting Jiha, Anna is willing to call Yujin by mom. Finally, Yujin allows Anna to meet with Jiha, but Yujin again reminds Anna to leave. Jiha's current condition is to protect Anna. Yujin told Anna to go to protect Jiha. If Anna doesn't go, Mai Ran and Sung Gun's lives are also in danger. Finally, Anna will leave and ask Yujin to always protect Jiha. With uncontrollable tears, Anna asks Jiha to stay alive. And Anna loves Jiha. In front of Seijun, Yujin admits that he will send Anna to Spain to become a model. All of Anna's needs will be met so that Anna considers Yujin a mother. She felt happy the first time Anna called her mother. By this time, Anna had started to pack up. Anna tries to reassure Mai Ran and the housemaid that they will be fine because Anna has made an agreement. Elsewhere, Samwan meets Wan Su for cooperation. Samwan plans to take Cloud 9 and then help Wan Su to get the memory. Samwan will attack the JSS headquarters. Now that Jiha is awake, Jiha is informed by the doctor about Enna's previous arrival. Finally, Jiha asks for the mirror to show the event when Enna was there, Yujin had accidentally seen it. Right now, Yujin really wants to have Jiha. According to her, love cannot be shared. Long story short, Yujin asks for the memory that Jiha stole, but Jiha has no intention of giving it to Yujin. If the memory is made public, the JB group will also be destroyed. Therefore, Jiha couldn't give it to Yujin. Given that Yujin really wants to dominate the JB group, Jiha intends to use the memory to protect himself and Enna from Yujin. After that incident, Director Kook realizes that Yujin has been in love with Jiha and to make her tamer. Director Kook invites Mr. Chol to betray her. However, Mr. Chol is a loyal person. On the other side, Yujin is very surprised that Jiha intends to destroy her. Jiha can't side with Yujin. So far, Yujin has used her story as an excuse to get what she wants in any way, regardless of other people. Even killing for no good reason. Meanwhile, Director Cook communicates with someone to commit treason. Director Cook deliberately drops coffee in the control room so that Wan Su's troops can enter to attack the JSS, which is led directly by someone. With Director Cook's help, someone was able to enter Cloud 9. The sudden attack made all of the JSS guards successfully beaten. Realizing the arrival of the intruder, Eugene locked the glass room in front of her. Director Cook's betrayal makes Eugene furious. Someone's arrival was nothing but to snatch Cloud 9 from his sister. Someone makes the bomb as a threat. The bomb will explode in two hours. Somewhere else, an NA is escorted by Secretary Kim and her personal bodyguard to the airport. Whereas, Guan Su had Yujin to discuss. Guan Su only wants the memory, but Yujin doesn't have it. Long story short, Jiha will give it to Guan Su. Before leaving, Jiha told Yujin to leave Cloud 9. Everyone who mastered Cloud 9 would have a sense of voracious. With Cloud 9's extraordinary strength, it will make its owner greedy. However, Yujin still didn't want to leave Cloud 9. For her, the mirror is a part of her. Finally, Jiva goes with Guan Su's bodyguard to retrieve the memory. At that time, Anna had to part with her housemaid at Myran. They apologized for confining Anna. Meanwhile, Eugene asks the mirror to turn off the elevator and also the cell phone signal in the room. CCTV has been linked to Secretary Kim. Immediately, all the remaining JSS troops were asked to come to the headquarters. Now in Cloud 9, Eugene had the upper hand. With the power of the mirror, Eugene will send the address of Director Cook's grandson in America to be killed within an hour. Of course, Director Cook doesn't want that to happen. Eugen orders Director Cook to die in front of her instead. Eugen could have ordered him to kill someone. However, if someone dies, then the bomb cannot be defused. However, the dead elevator and the continuously running bombs certainly benefit Eugen. In the end, the bodyguards will force someone to defuse the bomb. Then they follow Eugen's orders to get out of Cloud 9. By now, Ji Ha had retrieved the memory that is hidden. Instantly, Guan Su's bodyguards attacked him. Luckily, Mr. Chul shot them from a distance. Guan Su is very surprised that it was his bodyguards who died. After that, Jiha meets with Seijun. However, Jiha has no intention of giving memory to Seijun. The memory will be used to get rid of both Guan Su and someone. Unfortunately, Seijun and Mr. Chul don't agree with the plan. They only want Seijun to be president, which ends up making Jiha very sick. Jiha only wants Enna's safety and kills Guan Su. In the end, Jiha left the memory and went to kill Guan Su. Currently, Seijun is confused about what to do. Is it using the memory to save Yujin or using it to become president? According to Yujin, the situation is under control. All that needs to be done is to destroy Guan Su and the consortium. 
Finally, Sid Jun informs one of the consortium members that the memory is in her hands and asks for a meeting. Guan Su heard the news. Feeling this is a dangerous situation, Guan Su orders the police to arrest and not to get rid of Sid Jun and Ji Ha. On the other side, Ji Ha starts to attack at Guan Su's hideout. Unfortunately, Guan Su wasn't there. One of the bodyguards tells him that if she wants Anna to be safe, he must bring the memory for Guan Su. Si Jun also gets the news that if he wants his daughter to survive, the memory must be left to Guan Su. Si Jun had to come to JSS headquarters to hand it over. Meanwhile, Ji Ha comes somewhere to look for Anna. However, Ji Ha has to fight all the workers there alone. Unfortunately, Guan Su returns to take Anna away. In the end, Ji Ha tries to fight everyone alone. At the JS headquarters, Master Song managed to put up a fight and free the JS troops. At that time, Anna was taken to JSS so she was rescued. However, Anna must run again to avoid the enemy's chase. When Anna is confused about where to go, suddenly Master Song catches Anna again. Instantly, Anna remembered the person in her mother's room that night. Now Anna realizes that it was Master Song who flashed the light and silenced her that night. Elsewhere, Ji Ha gets information that at JSS headquarters there is a bomb about to explode. The bomb cannot be defused. Currently, someone also does not know about it. With his body in bad condition, Ji Ha rushes to JSS headquarters. Currently, the JSS troops are starting to fight back. Secretary Kim has also arrived there, but Master Song has lost Anna. Instantly, the order to find Anna was made. The news of Anna running away certainly makes Wan Su very angry. Meanwhile, those within Cloud 9 desperately wanted to get out of there. Yu Jin decides to activate the elevator to get them out, but has to come out as hostages. Se Jun and Mr. Chul have arrived at JSS. In order to secure the memory, Yu Jin orders Se Jun to enter Cloud 9. Not long after, Ji Ha also arrived there. With wounds all over his body, Ji Ha tries to find Anna after CCTV. In the end, Ji Ha managed to find Anna. However, the injuries were serious enough to make Ji Ha almost faint. Inside Cloud 9, Yu Jin asks for the memory that Se Jun brought. However, Se Jun has no intention of giving away the memory and will use it to protect Anna. Despite having to fail to become president and lose everything, Se Jun doesn't care. In the end, Yu Jin told the truth that she didn't kill Heron. Yujin lets Seijun think of herself as a murderer because she doesn't want Seijun to leave. Yujin wants to prove to her late father that her choice was right. Yujin apologizes for making Seijun's life like this. On the other side, Ji Ha has received medical help. Meanwhile, Enna is forced into Cloud 9 with Secretary Kim. However, someone uses a gun to shoot Secretary Kim, then holds Enna hostage for the memory. The elevator is deactivated again, making someone shoot Yujin. Not wanting Enna to get hurt too, Seijun hands over the memory. The bomb at JSS headquarters will explode in 10 minutes. The bomb cannot be defused. The evidence about Kumar will automatically be destroyed and Guan Su is left as a witness, which ultimately makes the consortium members have to follow Guan Su's orders to cut off the electricity in JSS. Ji Ha has come back to his senses. Ji Ha orders them to leave the JSS building because the bomb inside cannot be defused. Mr. Chul immediately informs Seijun about it. Hearing that, someone tried to stop them, but he couldn't. Immediately, someone asked his sister to reactivate the elevator. However, suddenly the power went out. The backup power in the room had been activated, but the elevator still wouldn't start. In this situation, Sijun asks Anna to hold the wound in Yujin's stomach. Sijun will find a way out. Enduring the pain, Yujin recounts the incident when Anna's mother died. At that time, Yujin's father found out where Heron was. Yujin's father finally takes action to kill Heron by ordering Master Song. Accidentally, Anna is there so Master Song flashed a light on Anna's face and hugs her. Just then, Yujin realizes that his father sent people to kill Heron. However, by the time she got there, Heron was already dying. If at that time Yujin helped Heron, Heron might have survived. However, Yujin ignored her. Indirectly, Yujin was the one who killed Heron. JS's troops began to carry out the rescue. Through the elevator path, Jiha went down to Cloud 9. Jiha's arrival makes someone put Anna as his hostage. Someone asks to go up first. Someone also shoots Ji Ha for his own safety. He doesn't stop making trouble. Someone throws away all the ropes above. After thinking for a while, Ji Ha had an idea. Ji Ha asks everyone to go to the elevator. However, Yu Jin doesn't want to leave the place. Yu Jin wants to rest. Finally, Ji Ha, Anna, Sejun, and Secretary Kim got into the elevator. However, suddenly Sejun changes his mind. He intends to help reduce the bomb explosion, then asks Ji Ha to look after Anna. With great difficulty, Sejun pulls the bomb into the mirror room. Sejun asks Yu Jin to close the glass door. Sejun will be Yu Jin's friend into the next life. Meanwhile, at this time, Ji Ha gave a signal to break the elevator wire rope. With that, the elevator immediately fell down. Simultaneously, the bomb exploded. After that incident, Ji Ha has sworn in for the Blackstone Massacre case against civilians. At the same time, Mai Ram becomes more romantic with Sung Yun. Meanwhile, 
Edna got the inheritance rights as the owner of JSS and the Foundation. Meanwhile, Wan Su has been caught by Ji Ha, then he is forced to die by committing suicide. On the other hand, Sun Wan has executed Secretary Kim. Ji Ha's accusation case has also been closed. Now Ji Ha can go anywhere. At the end of the film, Ji Ha explains the memory function which contains politicians and the dark business of the rich. Before he finished explaining, Anna sent email containing the evidences to the authorities which made Ji Ha very upset. Now Anna and Ji Ha live together very happily. Then the movie ends.